Some eat turkey, some eat ham during the holidays, but I'm a prime rib guy. So let's get right into it. So prime rib, rib roast, whatever you want to call it, is one of my favorite roasts to make. It isn't the cheapest to make, but I really want to treat the family to something special this year. So I picked up a rib roast, and I'm going to make a dry rub consisting of black truffle sea salt, black pepper, garlic, thyme, rosemary. We're going to coat it with a little oil to get that dry rub to stick. But then we're going to start off with a reverse sear type of method where we put it in the oven at around 250 until it hits an internal temp of about 115, 118-ish. Then we're going to crank the oven up to as hot as it gets so we can get a nice sear and a nice crust to the outside of this rib roast. This is one of my favorite things to eat at a restaurant, slathered with a bunch of horseradish and dipped in that au jus. We're gonna put all that stuff together today. It's something my seven-year-old has never had before, but he loves my ribeye. So I told him it's just like that, just a little juicier. So I'm hoping he's really gonna enjoy it. So let's jump into the recipe. So I picked up a bone-in rib roast with the rib bones separated and tied together, which is how the butcher had it prepared. You can get yours prepared boneless or leave the bone in and separated and tied. It's all a matter of preference. Boneless will cook quicker, but bone-in has a nicer presentation in my opinion. Start by pouring a couple tablespoons of oil on your rib roast. This is gonna help the rub stick. For the rub, I'm gonna be using a black truffle sea salt that I picked up from Salt of the Earth. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check them out. I'll also be using a nice liberal coating of coarse ground pepper. You can use fresh ground if you like. Granulated garlic. Thyme, and rosemary. Be sure to get all sides patting lightly to make sure that rub sticks. Transfer your rib roast to a baking sheet lined with a cooling rack. and make sure you stick it with the meat probe so that you don't risk overcooking it. I'm using a Weber eye grill that I ripped out of my grill because it's the only one I have left that hasn't broke at this point. But I'll have some links down in the description for some other meat probes that I like to use. Place your rib roast in the oven, then turn the temp up to 250 Fahrenheit. We're going to cook it until it reaches an internal temperature of 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Now while the rib roast is in the oven, I'm going to be cooking up some simple sides for dinner. Starting with about 3 pounds of Yukon potatoes that I've skinned and chopped, we're going to boil them until they are fork tender, about 15 minutes, then strain and place them back in the pot. Add a stick of unsalted butter, 1 tablespoon of Himalayan salt, a half tablespoon of black pepper, and a half tablespoon of garlic powder. Mash until it hits the consistency of your liking. Next, we're going to slowly add in about a cup of milk. I'm mixing mine with a fork to keep it chunky, but if you like creamy mashed potatoes, a hand mixer will get the job done. Have a quick taste to make sure the seasoning is on point, and if it is, place it back on top of the stove and cover. When the rib roast hits 118, remove it from the oven and let it rest for about 10 minutes. I'm going to be loosely covering with tin foil to help that carry over. You'll see the temperature rise to 125 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. While the rib roast is resting, crank your oven up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, or as hot as it'll go. Once it's preheated, place the rib roast back in the oven uncovered for about 10 to 15 minutes until the internal temperature has reached 140 to 145 degrees for a medium doneness. While the rib roast is searing, I'm going to make a quick blistered green bean side. I started making this last year and it's my new favorite way to cook fresh green beans. I'll have all the recipe links for everything down in the description if you want to check them out as well. Get your pan as hot as it can, then add about 2 tablespoons of sesame oil. Add about a cup and a half to 2 cups of fresh green beans and cook. Add in some chopped peanuts and finish it off with about a tablespoon of soy sauce, stirring occasionally. Let this cook until you see your green beans start to char. Now everything's done, it's just time to carve the rib roast. You want to remove the twine. And the bone before carving. Then 
and slice in one to one and a half inch thick slices. and all that's left is just to serve up. I'll let you have the first bite. Oh, my eyes are red on Yeah, don't worry about that. So this is like ribeye steak, except it's cooked differently. Ready to try? Yeah. Let me cut you a nice centerpiece. All right, bud. Bottoms up. What do you think? It's good and all, but it could use a little bit more juice to my flavor. <laughs> <laughs> He's a juice junkie. I have some nice Go juice. for it, bud. I mean, who doesn't love prime rib? So this is a great holiday dish. This is going to be our dinner for tonight. So we're gonna go ahead and sign off. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. Go ahead and leave a comment. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe. And hit the notification bell. Hit the button. notification bell. And we'll see you next year. Wait, next year? Next year. This is the last video of the year. Oh. See you in 2021. <laughs> see you in 2021.